Hi, my name's Mrs Knight and I'm here to teach you your maths lesson today. You'll need your practice activity from the last lesson, a pen or pencil and some paper. Press pause, go and find what you need and then we can begin the lesson. Hello again. Right, here's the practice question Mrs Grimes left you with. How did you choose to represent your answer? Did you use a number line or a bar model or jottings? But how did you use the stem sentence to help you? This is how I chose to do it. First, I chose to represent my solution on a number line. Molly's total distance from school, the end, was 1,400 metres. The distance she walks is the subtrahend, which is 850 metres. When I subtract 850 from 1,400, the difference is 550. She then walked a further 100 metres. I know that if the minuend stays the same, when I add to the subtrahend, I must subtract the same amount from the difference because that's what we learned with Mrs Grimes in the last lesson. She's walked a further 100 metres, so my subtrahend increases by 100 to 950. This means that the difference must decrease by 100. Is this what you got? Let's try putting that into our stem sentence. I've kept the minuend the same and added 100 to the subtrahend, so I must subtract 100 from the difference. So, did you choose to represent it using a bar model? I've tried it that way as well, and here's how I did it. end is the total journey from school to home, 1400, so that's in my top bar. She'd walked 850 metres, which gave us a difference of 550 metres. But when she walked on an additional 100 metres, the blue bar in my model representing the subtrahend needed to increase by 100 to become 950 metres. This means that the bar representing the difference needs to decrease by the same amount which gives us a difference of 450 metres. Some of you might have chosen jottings to represent the problem. This is what my jottings look like. I like this way of solving the problem because it's really clear for me to see how the increase in the subtrahend must be balanced by a decrease in the difference. So if I add 100 to the subtrahend, I need to subtract 100 here, which gives me an overall distance difference of 450. In this lesson, we're now going to look at when the subtrahend decreases. Molly's home is also a 1400 metre walk to her friend Ellie's house. She walked 575 metres. How much further does she need to walk? Well, the total distance from her home to Ellie's house is still 1400 metres, so this is still our menu end. And the distance she walked is the subtrahend. 575 metres, so by subtracting the subtrahend from the minuend, we can see how much further she has to go. The difference, 825 metres. Now what would happen if Molly got part of the way to her friend's house and realised she'd dropped her coat? Well, she'd need to go back and pick it up, wouldn't she? So she didn't get into trouble when she got home. Let's have a think about how we could solve this. What happens when she turns around and goes back on herself? Will she be getting close to her home or to her friend's house? Have a think. That's right. She'll be getting closer to home and further away from where she wants to get to because she starts by travelling towards her friend's house. But when she turns round, she goes back on herself. Let's have a think about how we could represent this. The total distance is 1400 metres. She's walked 575, so she needs to walk a further 825 to get to Ellie's house. If she walks back to her home to look for her coat, the distance represented by the subtrahend will decrease. The subtrahend will be 575 subtract 150. The subtrahend is decreased by 150, and the difference? That's right, it's 
increased by 150. I can show this with jottings too. Here's the equation representing the first part of Molly's journey. And then when she forgot her coat and had to go back, here are the jottings representing the second part of her journey. Now, have a careful look at them. What's the same about them? And what's different between these and the jottings we used for the previous question? Have a think. Pause the video if you need to and look back at what we did before. Here's our question for today. Ralph has saved some money. He wants to buy a games console that costs more money than he has saved. How much more does he need to save? How much more does he need to save? That's an odd question when we don't know how, what the games console costs or how much money he has. What can I draw to represent this problem? Pause this lesson now while you have a think about how you could do this and jot your ideas on a piece of paper. Hello again. Now you've thought about how you could represent the problem, let's think how we'd organise the information if we did have it. I know the cost of the games console is going to be my menu end. And from that, I can subtract how much he's saved. And that will tell me how much more he needs to save. And I think we can put the mathematical vocabulary we've learned into that equation to explain what each part of it is there for. The cost of the games console is the menu end. His savings are the subtract end. And so how much more he needs to save is the difference. Now we've worked this out, let's look at the problem with numbers in so we can work out how much he needs to save. Ralph has saved £150. He wants to buy a games console that costs £350. How much does he need to save? £350 subtract £150 is equal to £200. That's too easy. He's a bit like my brother used to be. He can't wait till he saved enough money before he starts spending. My granddad used to say the money was burning a hole in his pocket. So Raf's gone online and he spent £20 of his savings. So now he's got £130. How much money does he need to save now before he can buy the games console? Let's have a think. Have his savings increased? Or have they decreased? That's right. If he spent some of his savings, the amount he has will have decreased. So now he needs to save more. Can we write an equation to help us find out how much he needs to save? What's the same as the last question? What's different? Well, we know that the games console hasn't changed its price. What has changed is the amount of money that he's got. So the menu end has stayed the same, but the subtra end that represents his savings has decreased. Now, I could calculate this, but I think there's an easier way of doing it. What have we already learned that we could use? Have a think about the last two lessons. What happens in an equation when the menu end stays the same, but the subtra end changes? That's right, we need to change the difference by the same amount. That means we could use our stem sentence. Let's say it together. I've kept the menu end the same, and I subtracted mm from the subtrahend, so I must add mm to the difference. Now, could we put the numbers from this equation into our stem sentence? What's our subtrahend changed by? It's changed by the £20, hasn't it? The £20 that Rafa spent. So we can say, I've kept the menu end the same. I've subtracted 20 from the subtrahend. So I must add 20 to the difference. Let's think about how we represented the problem when Molly was travelling home from school. We were able to show the change in her journey on a number line. And I want to show Raf's problem on a number line too. So here's our number line with the first equation, 350 subtract 150. And 
and here is the second equation, 350 subtract 130, because his savings have now decreased by 20. That's the difference in the subtrahend. So if I have subtracted 20 from the subtrahend, I need to add the same amount of the difference. Let's try that with our stem sentence again. I have kept the minuend the same, and I've subtracted 20 from the subtrahend, so I must add 20 to the difference. We could look at it on a bar model as well. You can see that I've got a white bar representing the subtrahend, his savings of £150, but his savings decrease by 20. So the blue bar representing the amount he has left to save must increase by 20. And just like before, I could choose to represent this as jottings as well, like this. Subtracting from the subtrahend, adding the same amount to the difference. Now, two lessons ago, we learned that the more we subtract, the less we're left with, or the less we subtract, the more we're left with. In Mrs Grimes' lesson, we had a new generalisation that said, if the minuend is kept the same and the subtrahend increases, the difference decreases by the same amount. So today, I think we can add another generalisation. If the minuend is kept the same and the subtrahend decreases, the difference increases by the same amount. You might want to jot that generalisation down because it's time for you to work on your own now and using the generalisation will really help you to work out the answers without having to calculate everything from the beginning each time. So if you need to pause the video now so you can jot this down, do that now. Now it's your turn. This is what I'd like you to do before the next lesson. Don't forget to identify the minuend, subtrahend and difference in each part of the question before you start like we did together. Think as well about how you're going to represent the equation. Which of the models we've used today will you use? Will it be a number line, a bar model, or jottings? Or another way that I haven't thought of? If you need to, you will can watch all or part of this lesson again to remind yourself what the generalisation is. Good luck, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson.